Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shana Cersei. I'm so excited to paint with you today. Today we're going to be doing a recreation of a recent painting or recent video that I did, um, our mountain landscape uh, in these colors right here. So this is the recent one we did in watercolor. You can find that video here. I'll link it also in the description of this video. And we are going to recreate it in gouache. So here are the two final pieces. And this video is going to go through the gouache version and go check out the watercolor version. And then tell me which one you prefer for this style of painting. So thanks for joining me. Let's get started on our gouache painting. So gouache, this is my box of gouache, which my son has actually taken over so I had to kind of rifle through to figure out what colors I had left but gouache is basically a it's still a water-based medium it is thicker more opaque than watercolor you use less water with it but it's different than acrylic in acrylic is a plastic and it dries it is um it's a little What's the word? It's a little thicker. It's a little harder to maneuver than, than gouache. When you add water to gouache, it really um, gives you a lot of control and movement. Um, and it gouache dries matte, acrylic dries shiny. So gouache is more of a, like a, I guess a thicker, more opaque cousin to watercolor um, versus acrylic. So we are going to use that today. You can see here, I'm just using a paper plate here. I have some different colors out here. I tried to get close to the colors in here. I have um, a yellow ochre for this color. I did not have an aqua, so I had to make an aqua with some viridian green, phthalo blue, and white. And then I also have black here that I'll mix with Prussian to give myself a navy blue. And we'll go from there and see how it goes. I have to be really sparing with my white because uh, my son has used pretty much the whole tube. <laughs> this is all we have left because he uses this a lot as a mixed medium with his watercolor for highlights. So um, I might pull in PH Martin's white later if I need more for some details. All right, so the reason I wanted to do gouache on this is because when I was painting this, I really wanted to do some other layering that really can't be done with watercolor. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I wanted to layer some lighter colors on top of darker colors, um, which you can't really do with watercolor because they're so transparent. But with gouache, they're more opaque, so you can get away with it a little easier. So we're going to see how it goes. I asked in the video if you wanted to see a gouache painting of this, and you said yes. So let's get to it. So first thing I'm going to do is try to replicate my drawing from before. It's not going to be exact, but I'm going to give it a go to get pretty close. And here we'll go across and all right. And then our big mountain in the background. And then we got to put our rising moon in. Now the rising moon, I haven't decided if I'm going to do that in gouache or watercolor because I really love that wet on wet technique. Um, that I use to create this moon, but maybe we'll give it a go with gouache as well. All right, so there we go. And I think I'm probably gonna add some textures on that I wasn't able to do before with the watercolor version. All right, so let's get started. So first thing I'm gonna do with this is since I've made this aqua color already, I am gonna go in and do those layers. So I'm just gonna start in the mountains and work my way around. Now you apply water to gouache just as you would to your watercolors and you can see I get like a nice milky consistency. I gotta make a little bit more of this aqua color. So this blue, touch of this already in green and a bunch of white will get me pretty close. It's gonna be a little darker, I think, but that's okay. Cobalt teal was the name of the color for the watercolor, and this is a mixture to kind of get close to that. All right, so let's see. So when you paint with gouache, it goes on in this really nice milky, creamy consistency. 
you can still dilute it um, to get some more opacity or blending to make it lighter. But you can also add white to uh, your gouache colors to get lighter. So look at that. It's like super creamy, super milky. I'm still getting a little bit of the kind of watercolor vibe of texture, but it's really easy to spread and blend and do um, flat washes. Beautiful. All right, we're going to let that dry. You can still layer with gouache just like you do with other um, colors or with with watercolors so up here I'm gonna see if I can blend this down to be lighter towards the bottom So as you can see, like as I add more water and blend down, and I'm kind of going over my line there, but that's okay. It does get lighter and more transparent. So you can still achieve some of that um, gradient with these but they really do play well as a flat kind of medium all right so those are the only colors or areas that i did in aqua i am just going to i should have erased my pencil lines a little bit more but maybe i'll go over that later all right so let's jump into i'm going to jump into my yellow ochre. I used, um, what did I use in the last one? I used raw sienna. Yellow ochre and raw sienna are kind of similar in nature in this earth tone yellowish color. Um, so this is the closest I could get, but this is really close. So you can see this is kind of hardened as well and just adding water to it reactivates it. So even if your gouache hardens, you can reactivate it with water. Unlike acrylic, once acrylic hardens, it's, it's plastic. You can't reactivate it so we're going to start with these it has such a nice um, consistency to it it is fun to paint with but it is different it is different than watercolor so it just has, it has a higher concentration of pigment to binder for sure. The brand that I'm using that I have on here is just an Arteza set I got online. I don't use it as often as I thought I would when I got it. I've had it for over a year, but again, my son uses it quite a bit or at least certain colors from it to add to his paintings. I like this, I can get like, almost see my brush strokes in it if you wanted to create texture and didn't want it to be flat. So I'm gonna give that a try. I'm kind of just pouncing my way around here. You see that to create kind of texture. I'm gonna leave that. All right, where else? We have to go here, here, and here with the yellow ochre. And I didn't add any white or anything to this. This is just pure right out of the tube. And you can use your same watercolor brushes with gouache. Just clean them off really well when you're done. Water this one down a little bit more. 
So this one I'm using a more, um, so this was very opaque. This one is going to be more transparent because I added a lot of water to it, a lighter color. So you can play with the transparency of these. All right. Oh, and one more, one more. Make this one really light down front, sure. Maybe not. All right, there we go. All right, so the last thing we have to do with the last colors are this dark kind of navy color. So let's try to figure out how to make some of that. So I have this Prussian blue. My Prussian blue was really hard to get out of the tube. It was super dried in there. So I had to soak the top. I only got this little nib out. And I'm going to add a little black to that. And this won't be exactly the same as that other blue color. That was an indigo, which I don't have. Um, but let's swatch this out. So let's take a little piece. It's still a really dark color. It definitely has some more green undertones to it. You guys can't really see those. Let me just, there you go. When I um, add water, it's a beautiful color, um, but it has more of a green undertone than a coolness to it like the indigo, but we're going to go with it. I'm sure I could get closer if I wanted to do some more substantial mixing, but. You don't have to worry about gouache bleeding into itself as much. So this, it dries pretty quickly, but you know, this area isn't completely dry, but I don't have to worry too much about it bleeding. I mean, if things are super, super wet, you want to be careful, but I do like these textures that I can get, especially with the darker colors. You do have to let it completely dry if you're going to paint over it because it will reactivate that way. So after I do this layer, before I add trees on and start layering, I'm going to have to let the whole thing dry really, really well. But seeing these darker colors, let me just show you. Let me rinse off my brush a little bit. So we're going to lift out a little so you can see I can lift out and create texture with some lighter areas. Now, if you really want to go for a flat, flat wash, you can. But if you want to create some texture within your wash. You know what, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take this all the way up here to this pencil line, because the pencil line is bothering me. And it's my painting, so I can change it if I want to. So I'm gonna have this little slice up here, and actually we're just gonna make it a little wider. There we go. Okay, let's, let me make a little bit more of that color because I'm gonna need a bunch of it for the other areas. I think I went a little dark with this one and I can't get any more Prussian blue out, so. Look how smooth that is, so smooth. Like it's so smooth and but opaque, so not as kind of watery. I'm just gonna turn this around as watercolor, but like not, like acrylic would take so much work to get this so smooth.
All right, now we got to do the sky. I'm going to start in the corners. Let's see if we can create a vignetting effect by applying water. All the way down to that line there. So you can see adding water does lighten it. How smooth of a transition that is. I'm not sure. We'll see how well we can do here. Because you don't have to use as much water on these and it's more pigment, more paint, um, you can get away with different papers. You don't have to be, you know, 100% cotton. You could even get away with mixed media journals. So that is something to keep in mind as well. You can still certainly use 100% cotton papers, but you don't have to. All right, so I got lots of paint all over the place for this, but I got to smooth or blend it out a little bit. So let me rinse my brush off completely. And so when you do add um, water to it, you're going to see some of your brush strokes. It's not going to blend kind of as seamlessly as you can get watercolor. You have to work at it a little bit. At least that's what I'm finding. Again, I don't paint with gouache all that often, but I might start. Some of these designs really lend themselves to layering and flatter washes, so it could be a good fit for me and some of the work I'm doing. All right, I'm just gonna let it dry and see what we get. I'm gonna dry the whole thing and then we'll come back and tackle our moon and add some of those layers that I wanted to add before by layering some of my yellow over the blues with trees um, as well as the dark color and go from there. All right, we're back and everything is dry. I'm gonna start with my moon and then we're gonna do the magic of layering, which is really why we use the gouache in the first place. So I'm gonna to try to use the same technique that I did before with a wet on wet with some really watered down gouache. So I'm gonna wet my whole moon. I am leaving a little sliver without any water in it at all. All right, so I have some really watered down black here. Ooh, I need to water it down even further, I think. And I'm just gonna start dropping some in. We'll see if it, it seems to bleed and blend even more than my watercolor. But we're gonna see what we get. I want this to go all the way up to this edge here. And there we go. I'm going to leave it. It looks good now. We'll see how it does drying with the wet on wet. Got a little puddle here. Not really sure what to do about that. But I'm just going to leave it and let it dry. I think it looks pretty good so far. All right, so let's get to layering. So I really wanted to, one of the things I really wanted to do is I wanted to be able to layer something other than a dark, or uh, bleed proof white on top. I wanted to be able to layer colors on top of other colors, which is why I went to gouache. So I'm gonna do the same kind of thing, but I'm gonna use my yellow now over top of blues, and I'm gonna use my aqua color. I'll have to try to make a little bit more of that over top of yellows and 
hopefully get some really fun results. So I'm going to start over here with a tree and I'm trying to use really opaque, like very little bit of water, just enough to get it to flow. And it is very opaque. I do still see a little tiny bit of color through some areas, but I bet you if I layer at least one more layer, that would completely go away. But it's really not bad. It's certainly not as bad as it would be with watercolor. So one, let's put another one like up here. I just have to make sure I don't go up into my moon because it's still wet. All right, here we are with our final product. One in watercolor, one in gouache, both very similar in nature. Um, which one do you like best? I think I'm a big fan of my ability to layer in medium value colors here with the trees and not just having to rely on the really contrasty dark colors as well as the bleed proof white on this one. So leave a comment, tell me which one you like best. I hope you enjoyed this comparison tutorial between gouache and watercolor. Go ahead and check out the watercolor video for this one um, in full real time if you want to really compare the two. Uh, thanks so much for joining me. As always, it's a pleasure to paint with you. Go ahead and check out the description for the list of my supplies. I'll put where I got my gouache uh, materials online in there, as well as links to my social media and um, my Studio Crew classroom. All right, everybody, take care and happy painting.